students let's begin the new chapter in english memories of a visit this chapter speaks about the narrator's visit to france where his cousin supriya lives children a visit to any place offers us an opportunity to explore things or places right not only this a visit to any place gives us both information and entertainment so here in this chapter the narrator will take us along with him to france and let's explore france its beauty begin our chapter now memories of a visit it was the month of april springtime in france and the best time to visit i was going to visit my cousin supriya i left mumbai at 4 am and arrived in france by 7 am french time for oh, students the first paragraph speaks about the narrator who visits france at his cousin supriya's place here the speaker or we can say narrator visits in the month of april which is the spring time in france children what do you experience in india in the month of april it's summer isn't it but in france it is spring time where everywhere you'll find lush green areas in the third line who is i here I is the narrator so he says that he started his journey from mumbai at 4 am and reached his destiny that is france by 7 am children this say 7 am is not the indian time but french time i landed at the charles de gaulle airport just outside paris supriya was there to meet me we got into a taxi and headed towards paris as we left the airport i noticed there wasn't as much traffic as in mumbai i asked supriya about france it's about 1/4 the size of india with a tiny population she said that means france is not crowded There's plenty of room for everyone. Ha! Huh, I said jokingly. The narrator landed at the airport. Which airport is mentioned here? It's Charles de Gaulle Airport and he met met his cousin Supriya there. As she had come to pick the narrator or welcome the narrator. They hired a taxi and moved towards Paris. The narrator looked outside the taxi and found that here the roads were not crowded that is not much traffic was there as compared to mumbai so supriya told him that both in area and population paris is very less than india supriya said that even in the large cities where you will find much population they are well developed that means people over there lead very comfortable life and are happy some large cities where there are factories are a bit crowded but the country has almost everything that people need for a comfortable and happy life the soil is rich and the sea borders much of france so there are plenty of good vegetables fruit grains meat and fish she replied Supriya further said that though in big cities where there are factories there is much population but everything is well planned and managed secondly people get variety of food as good crops grow there and this area has sea borders so seafood is also easily available <laughs> What 
nature special? I asked. The French Alps, beautiful snow-capped mountains that people love to visit. There are also rivers and plains with luscious grass for grazing animals. Dairy farming is very popular because the French love cheese. It is an essential part of their diets. You will also find vineyards or sunny hillsides loaded with juicy grapes. Most are harvested and pressed into wine for which France is famous. And you already know about French fashion. France leads, the world follows, she laughed. See children, when you visit a new place, you are curious to know the speciality of that place, isn't it? So, the narrator asks Supriya about special places to see or visit. For that, Supriya gives the examples of the French Alps, they are the snow-capped mountains, rivers, luscious green plains, dairy farming, vineyards, and above all, French fashion for which France is famous all over the world. We drove past the Eiffel Tower and I noticed that it looked more beautiful than it did on postcards. The Eiffel Tower represents France like the Taj Mahal represents India, Supriya commented. In this paragraph, the narrator says that Eiffel Tower looks more beautiful when you view it instead of looking in the picture, magazine or so. Adding to it, Supriya says, as the Taj Mahal represents India, the Eiffel Tower represents France. Children, you know, the Taj Mahal and Eiffel Tower are from the Seven Wonders. Paris is a very beautiful old city. I love the white stone buildings that gleam in the sun. People here love the outdoors, the parks, and gardens. Some parks have ponds where children sail toy boats. You'll find rows of trees and flowers everywhere. Some trees are trimmed so that they look like huge green lollipops. Now in this paragraph, Supriya praises and admires Paris a lot by highlighting the white stone buildings that shines by the rays of the sun. She mentions the lush green areas like parks and gardens with ponds where children love to sail their boats and beautified trees in the shape of lollipops attract people. Like the people of Paris are proud of their city. They keep it so clean. I had to remark because I don't see any litter on the streets. That's why tourists love to visit the city. And Paris, being the capital, is well connected to other parts of the country. So, travel is no problem at all. The narrator here compares his city with Paris and says that people love to come Paris as it is very clean and not only this, Paris is connected to the other ports as well which becomes easier for the visitors to travel. Supriya's flat from the window, I saw the sea, the river that winds through Paris like a wet grey ribbon. I noticed pavement cafes where people sat outdoors at little tables, eating, drinking and talking. It all looked very pretty. 
there was much to see in Paris. I even visited the Musée de l'Or, one of the finest museums in the world. Now the narrator has reached Supriya's flat and as he view out of the window, he finds the heavenly sight of the river flowing through Paris. He notices people enjoying coffee at the cafe shops and visited the finest museum in the world, Musée du Level. After a month in Paris, we visited Normandy and Brittany, two of the oldest parts of the country. Brittany is a peninsula and part of Normandy is a peninsula too. This means that the land reaches out into the sea and in the case, the Mediterranean Sea. Maybe that is why this part of France felt cooler. Sometimes storms rose from the ocean and it rained a little almost every day. The people here, mainly farmers and fishermen, were quite old-fashioned. They weren't interested in trying new things, unlike the people in other parts of France, especially Paris. One day after a month, the narrator visits the oldest parts of Paris, Normandy and Brittany. Now let's talk about these two parts. Brittany is a part of Normandy. Both are the peninsula. Children, peninsula is a portion of land almost completely surrounded by water but it is attached to the mainland on one side. So these two regions that is Normandy and Brittany have cool summers that is summer is pleasant there and cold winters. Occupation of the people of these two peninsulas is farming and fishing and you know they are old fashioned, they are happy with their lives. They don't want to be modern like the people living in the other parts of France. We went to a small museum close to the seaport which had models of wooden sailing ships that soldiers and colonists had sailed in. They told us how, during World War II, big guns had thundered there, bombs had exploded, and bullets had ripped through trees and gardens. The narrator visits another museum in Normandy, where he finds the statues of soldiers made of wood, and they depict about the Second World War, that is, the destruction of France in the Second World War. Fortunately, the seacoast and the countryside were very peaceful when we visited. France turned out to be all that I dreamt of and more. I returned home cherishing every moment of my two-month holiday in France. Finally, the narrator visits the seacoast and the countryside where he finds peaceful environment and declares that visiting France has made his dreams come true his two months holidays in France are worth enjoying.